Winter is coming. Do you have a frost plan? I know it feels like summer just ended, but it's always good to have a plan and look ahead. If you live in an area that suffers from frost, this is something really important that you should take into consideration so you can be better prepared to protect your plants. The first thing you want to think about when creating a frost plan is to make sure you have it figured out before the frost occurs. I know that seems kind of logical, but lots of times, particularly with dealing with gardens, you don't really think about a situation until it arises. If you have frost, it is already too late. You want to have your plan set all of your supplies ready so that way you can watch the predictions on your weather channel to make sure you are prepared to protect your plants. Now, how do you protect your plants from frost? Well, the main consideration is that you need to protect the ambient temperature, and that is the temperature above ground. The ground level is actually going to retain some of its heat so it'll minimize any damage to plant growth underneath the ground. But for just a quick frost, it's really the top portion that you need to take into consideration. Any drafts, any uh, extra moisture, these are things that we want to eliminate or protect our plants from. One of the easiest ways to do that is with a breathable fabric. There are many commercially made covers for this very thing. You can get some that have little arches that you can use so that you don't have the material directly on your plants. You can also just use sticks and stakes to prop up and make little tents, little enclosures for your plants. Lots of plants are very delicate, and so you want to take that into consideration and make sure that you have support. Something that's more sturdy, like a, a citrus tree or a mature bush, that's going to be able to hold the fabric on its own, and you can just drape the fabric right on top of it. The fabric cover is gonna do two things. It's going to keep away the moisture from your plants and it's going to trap that heat that we were talking about that is retained in the soil and keep it around your plant. It's also going to keep away drafts. So this is a fantastic way to deal with frost if you just have intermediate amounts of it. Now, if you have frost for extended period of time, you may have to take slightly more drastic measures. Besides using the supports to keep the fabric off of your plants, you want to make sure that you have an anchor at the base so that way no drafts can get underneath your fabric and then ruin the whole process. Uh, many things you can use just lying around like rocks or bricks or pavers, even decorative statuary I've been known to use as a support for my cover. Even your cold-loving vegetables and plants can be affected by frost. So make sure that you do a little Google Foo and research what your particular plants' needs are so that way you can best protect them. When applying your cover, it's a good idea to place it over your plants early in the evening. That way it hasn't had time for the frost to to kick in and uh, you can still see and be able to move maneuver around your plants and get them set. I don't like to keep them covered all through the day if frost doesn't last through the day. You just wanna make sure the cover is in place during the frost period. So that said, if you cover your plants during the night and there was frost and then that comes back up to temperature, go ahead and remove those fabrics. Now you might have to uh, reapply every night uh, so that's really up to you. Some plants are going to be able to to tolerate being covered longer than the others. So again, you're going to have to do some research and figure out what your particular plant's needs are and how closely apart the frost dates are. For small plants, you can actually use a bit of a cheat and recycle. You can use like a one gallon milk jug, cut out the bottom and place that right over your plant. That's gonna create the same environment, but it'll stand up on its own so you won't need supports and you can wiggle it to bury it slightly in the ground. Therefore, you won't need anchors as well. Some low growing uh, uh, plants such as potatoes or sweet potatoes, something that vines across the ground, you can cover that entirely with straw. Straw is a great insulator. It is also going to help put some nutrients back into your ground after your planting is done. So it's not something that you have to put on and take off each time. Once your frost day is over, you can just push the straw away from your the green part of your plant and let the rest act as mulch. 
If you live in frost-prone climates, another option for you might be able to use planters with wheels. That way you can move the planters with the plant intact into a warmer environment, such as a greenhouse, uh, a garage, even your own house. Of course, small plants such as herbs that you have potted, you can just carry those around to wherever you want. Uh, my brother likes to follow the sun in his house and he will actually move his potted plants to different windows based on the sunlight. Some additional things to take into consideration in protecting your plants against frost is watering. Uh, many plants kind of go into a semi-dormant state and they don't require watering. In fact, watering may cause more issues than you may expect. The water in frost situations turns to ice, creates crystals. This is going to cause excess damage to your plants, whether it is on the plant material itself or in the ground. You also want to check what your frost dates are in your specific area. It may be time in the winter to let your ground go fallow for a bit. That way you won't have to worry about protecting your plants because you won't have plants planted. What is your frost plan? Is there something I forgot to mention in this video that you found helpful protecting your plants? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Plant Life.